What is going on, everybody? Hope you all have an amazing day. And today, we are going to be reviewing Aston Villa's match against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, where we went there and held the Blues to grind out a hard-earned point. I think it was a very good result, and today we're going to be covering some key points and key players that I think were pivotal to this team performance and how we did all that stuff and where we move on from this and more in today's video. Also, just want to make a quick note, I am wearing my Aston Villa away kit under, I mean over a sweatshirt, just in case it looks a little weird. It's just because it's cold right now, so in my house, and it's always cold when I film these videos because I film them at night, ridiculous o'clock at night. By the way, also make sure you subscribe to the channel as over 89% of you guys that watch these videos are not subscribed. Let's try to change that, but enough of the rambling, let's just get into the video. We're going to start off by talking about how brilliant Aston Villa's defensive line was today. That includes Emmy Martinez, who made some tip-top saves and his distribution was ridiculously accurate. Nothing you can do about the goal. Obviously, it's a uh, cross-diagonal run from Olivier Giroud. Powerful header from the left side of the six-yard box. There's nothing you can do about that one. It's what Giroud has done for years. He's an expert at it. Target and Cash were absolutely unplayable on the wings today. Target um, shut down Callum hudson doy who was a tricky winger to deal with on his day. And the only time hudson doy managed anything was when Target was making, moking Aspilicueta on the wing and hudson doy was cutting in through the middle. Cash kept Pulisic quiet for majority of the game. Obviously, Pulisic had some good chances. But the only reason the goal came from his side was because Cash was tracking in to cover Pulisic. And then Pulisic slides that ball through to Chilwell and Traore had lost track of Chilwell's run. So the only reason that goal came from his side. Cash made some brilliant blocks, including that one block. I believe it was the shot from Pulisic on the edge of the box. He blocked that. And he made some crucial headers and obviously got bonked in the face early on. And it just played through it. That's what you love to see from Matty Cash. Joint man of the match for me. The other player I've gone for who I think deserves to be in the shout for man of the match is John McGinn. What a performance it was from John McGinn. Threw his body around like an absolute trooper. Used his broad build to body players off the ball. Body the likes of Conte, Mount, and Jorginho multiple times to win the ball back. Made some great passes going forward as well. But it was his defensive work that really satisfied me. Defended so resolutely. And almost had a potential goal of the month contender when he rocketed that, fo that shot off his left foot. After receiving the ball from I believe it was Anwar El Ghazi against the crossbow. And Manu didn't even move. If that gone in, the absolute scenes would have been mental. But alongside him, his, his uh, defensive midfield compatriot, Douglas Louise, was also very good today. He controlled play, he made some decent dribbles and showed some good skill at times, and also just broke up passes and does what he does best. Distributed the ball, brought it from back to forward when we needed it to be, made some nice long balls as well, and kept the game simple and didn't make any mistakes that I remember today, and at least any high-profile ones. Well done, Matt. I mean, well done, Doug. <laughs> well done, John McGinn. We're going to go back to the defensive line and talk about Courtney Horse and Esri Conso, who I thought distributed the ball very well today. Although they did lose the aerial battle with Olivier Giroud, one that not many players are going to win in the Premier League. He is probably the best header of the ball in the Premier League. And obviously they only got beat once with a clinical header that resulted in a goal, and that was his goal. Well, he made the cross diagonal run from the right side of the six yard from the right side of the eighteen to the left side of the six yard box, got across the face of Ezra Consa and headed in Ben Chilwell's cross. Which is just unfortunate, although I did think they had a very good game. Consa obviously had that reflexive acrobatic head off the line. House was massive, blue body players off the ball, shielded that one ball out what I lo which I loved, and distributed the ball well and made some nice clearances as well. Overall, I thought our centre-back partnership was pretty steady today and didn't make any, too many mistakes and defended well when there were some mistakes made from our attacking players, which we'll get on later in, which we'll get on to later in the video, of course. But well done, Courtney Hodge. Well done, as we can't stop. I thought it was a superb technical performance from Bertrand Traore today. He dribbled at players, had some great little skill moments, and also made some great passes. The one that comes to mind is when he was off balance and still made that outside of the boot left foot pass perfectly into Matty Cash. The moments like that that can change games. I know it didn't change the game. I know it wasn't in the right spot. But to have that ability in your locker is something that we need in this aspect of the team and that any team could use. And he dribbled with ease, took, a, took it around players, always seems to know where he is on the pitch and doesn't dribble into players that are on rushing him. Always finds a way out of sticky situations. That's what we love to see from Bertrand Traore. There was one negative low. He didn't do too much defensive work today. He left Matty Cash isolated at times against the on-rushing Ben Chilwell and the ever-dangerous, ever-energetic Christian Pulisic. And that was the reason they scored their first goal. He lost track of Chilwell's run from the left-back spot. 
And he's got to get better at that if he wants to be a mainstay in this Aston Villa team, which I think he should be. I love Bertrand Traore. And it could be hard for Bo- for Barkley to force his way back into this Aston Villa starting eleven If our wingers like Traore, like Anwell, or Gazi keep to perform, why change what works? We've been on a great run with this, and I'm going to make a video on why it's going to be a dilemma for Bo- Ross Barkley to get back into this Aston Villa team. But of course, it was a great performance from Bertrand Traore, but we just need to work on that defensive work so it was like the goal don't happen again. It was another good performance from Jack Grealish tonight. He drove up players and won a lot of fouls and was our main attacking outlet as he always is nowadays, although it wasn't his best game by his quite high standards. He did have one strange back pass which almost resulted in a Christian Pulisic goal for Chelsea, so let's not do that again, Jack. But it was another solid performance from Jack. But there he was again. Anwar Ghazi was amongst the goals at Stanford Bridge. That's five in his last five games for Aston Villa. What a run of form he is having. Dribbled at plays phenomenally. Took out three players with one move at one point. Just showcased the ability we all know he has. It's just so talented. So much raw talent and ability. And when he's on, when he's got so much confidence and playing with all the confidence that he has right now, he is almost unstoppable. And he's really showing a killer instinct in front of goal, which is lovely to see for Manuel. And should retain his spot for the next game as well. What a run of form he's having. What a performance from Anwar El Ghazi. Top boy. The next and last player we're going to talk about today is Ollie Watkins. Another good performance from him. He ran relentlessly. Didn't get much service today, which is why he wasn't among the clear-cut chances, wasn't among the goals, or wasn't among the assists. But he did work tirelessly for the team and created a lot of chances, made runs down either flank, and held the ball up well. I don't remember him losing the ball today. Another good performance from Ollie Watkins in an Aston Villa shoot. Such a consistent performer, and he's just proving how hard he works. And the goal's coming for him. I, 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 see a, I foresee a brace incoming soon. Maybe against Manchester United, you never know. Another good performance from Ollie Watkins. Now I'm going to wrap up and conclude all my thoughts on this game. I am very happy with the point going to Stamford Bridge against a Chelsea team that has a lot of squad depth and a lot of energy, a lot of quality, albeit they are in a bad run of form at the moment, but they still have that quality in their team to beat anyone on their day. I'm just so happy to get a point away from home at Stamford Bridge, adding to a phenomenal away record this season, and we completely deserved it to be honest. We defended resolutely, put our bodies on the line, made some crucial blocks in our own third, and even threatened in the final third. It's not like we just got a crap goal from out of nowhere. We had a very well-worked goal, a deep cross from Matty Cash into Anwar Ghazi, who followed it through the legs of Edward Mendy. We could have won the game. John McGinn rattled the crossbow and Jacob Ramsey almost scored about 15 milliseconds after he came onto the pitch. But Chelsea could have won it as well, and that's kind of like what I said in my prediction video. I did predict a 1-1 draw, although I, I, could, I did say I could see it going 2-1 either way between Chelsea or Aston Villa, which it definitely could have been. They had some good chances as well. Had a few shots go over with the likes of Vono, Timo, I mean, like the likes of Vono, Pulisic, all missed chances that could have gone in. So we did get a little bit lucky, but we also did get a little bit unlucky to not win this game today. So I think it balances out. A 1-1 draw is a fair result. Very happy with that. We move on to Old Trafford on Friday. It's going to be another tough one. But I think we could get something there if we fight as well and really show up. But we are coming up against the Manchester United team that is in red-hot form, unlike Chelsea, who are on a low coming into this game. So it's going to be a tough one, but I will be doing a match preview on that game. Make sure you like the video to see it as well, and subscribe with notifications on if you want to see that video as soon as it comes out. But that's going to do it for me. I hope you all have enjoyed the video. I know I certainly did enjoy filming it. Uh, it's just a great result against Chelsea, really. We move on to Old Trafford on Friday, like I said. And make sure to subscribe to the channel. Like I said, over 89% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. Let's change that. And just like the video if you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. And remember, up the villa.